Included in the final agreement was a settlement amount of $152 million paid over the course of five years for the setup, administration, and future investments of the corporate group. When IDC got this money, finally the door opened and the Inivialuit were able to go out there and take part in what's going on. So just the opportunities was there. When you look at the kind of businesses that are run by Inuvialuit-owned businesses, we're doing very well. Because it's not only the corporate group, but through the claim, the preference, preferences that are given to Inuvialuit companies in our region gives them an opportunity to grow too. With the regional corporation, there are different organizations that adhere to the varying sections of the final agreement. The Inuvialuit Game Council, in cooperation with the Community Hunters and Trappers Association, along with the Joint Secretariat Office, Wildlife Management Advisory Council, partner with other government organizations to monitor, assess, and protect the wildlife, lands, and waters within the Inuvialuit Settlement Region. Through the Development Corporation, Investments have been made in many companies that operate in and out of the settlement region. Some things are valuable and they make money and, um, and these are also services that people require, you know, airline services that people require, shipping services that people use. So these are things that were, that it made sense for the corporate group to get involved with because it was services to Inuvialuit. The corporate group became shareholders in businesses such as Canadian North, the airline company that serves 37 communities throughout the North, and NTCL, or Northern Transportation Company Limited, which has delivered goods to remote communities in the North since the 1950s. 2009 was also the 75th anniversary of the much relied on company. Other business investments have been made in other industries in the ISR, such as energy, construction, and service. While the corporation now has an estimated value of nearly 400 million, it isn't always about bottom lines. There are many community organizations and programs that get their funding through the regional corporation, or the IRC would help organize government funding. The claim is not only about the economics, but the social well-being of the Inuvialuit. It's beneficial because we need to develop a co capacity in our region. We need to develop economic opportunities. And uh, we need to help people with ad addictions, wellness issues, um, family, family wellness issues, uh, preventative health issues. So they're able to respond and they're able to um, you know, um, participate with the uh, goals of the Indian Final Agreement. One such program is run through the Aboriginal Healing Foundation. The program offers support services and runs workshops to help community members deal with mental health issues and issues faced by former residential school students. The general focus is try to help the elders uh, to be uh, uh, stronger, um, feeling better about themselves, uh, equipping them with uh, tools that uh, we need to, to be a better service to their, to their communities, to the people in their communities. And I wanted to show you this because I can't, I can not afford to express it on something like that. I, all my hurt, all my hate, I kept it to myself. I couldn't find the strength to, to get rid of it. Uh, but now, through this workshop, I know how to deal with it. We are pro progressing, that uh, our funding is geared towards Inivialuit, so it feels really good to see people succeed. The Community Development Division also has individuals available to help facilitate local economic opportunities in each of the communities in the ISR. One such program is the muskox harvest in Saks Harbor. Self-sustaining economic opportunity for the community. So Saks Harbor has a lot of muskox. Let's do something with the muskox in Saks Harbor. You know, it's the largest herd in the Northwest Territories in Canada. Let's do something with that. So we're just looking at each community and working with government, partnering with government to see what, how we can respond to each community. Another department in the corporate group is the Inuvialuit Education Fund. IEF 
provides funding for beneficiaries looking to further their education and careers. You have to meet criteria. You have to be in a, a diploma or a degree program, have a 70% or better average in your last academic year. And if you're from the Northwest Territories, you receive an extra $500 a month. If you're not from the Northwest Territories, but you are an evaluate beneficiary, you can receive an extra $200 a month. We also have 20 scholarships that range from $1,000 to $5,000. IEF also partners with other departments within the corporate group and outside federal agencies and companies to organize career fairs in each of the communities to showcase education and career options to Inuvialuit youth. I do visits to communities in the springtime, February, March, April, and I help them fill out all applications for student financial assistance for college, university, and for IEF. We want beneficiaries to be educated and to be a part of the um, NWT or Canadian province is working at the same level, receiving the same benefits, same salary. It's so important for people to be, have a good education so in turn they can run. Like Inuvialuit should be getting the education that's required. And it's got to be a good education because we're handling the future of the Inuvialuit, the investments of the Inuvialuit.